more measured in the size cannonball that they fired. So they go from a one pounder all the way up to a 36 pounder. Okay, and every caliber in between. You can have an 18 pounder, a six pounder, and of course the larger the pounder it is, the larger the barrel and the larger the carriage are gonna be. The French like these type of guns on the front here because they're very mobile and portable. You can take the wheels off the carriage, take the barrels off, put them in a wagon, put them in a large canoe. They're very transportable, unlike larger guns you might see at us at a larger fortress, which were not very portable. So these were nice because anything that was out on the frontier that French Marines, which is what I'm dressed as, would come across, such as fur trading disputes, uh, trading posts, we could easily knock down walls, heavy doors and things, and that would allow us entry. And it kind of allowed us to control the waterways because we'd be able to sink any types of canoes or bateaus or any of the ships that they were using on the upper Great Lakes at this time. So with two cannons like this, we could control the St. Clair River because there was nothing that would come floating that was in use that could withstand these cannonballs. So these were very uh, important cannons. So the first thing we're going to do in any bombardier, which is what the French called their artillery men, would do is to make sure that the cannons are safe to load. So to do this, we're going to take a implement called a worm. You want to hold the worm up. It looks like a corkscrew. We're going to put that down the barrel and that allows us to search inside in case there's anything that shouldn't be there. All right, because you never know what somebody could just shove down the front of your cannon when it's not in use. Okay, then the second thing they would do is uh, wash it out with water on a wet sponge. And then they use a dry sponge. And then once this is complete, we're ready to load. And this is something bombardiers would do before the first round and after every shot that they fire. It seems like a process, but you don't want your cannon crew or your cannon to become damaged by any unnecessary explosions that might occur inside because it wasn't ready to be loaded. Because black powder is kind of unstable and it just takes a single spark to ignite anything. All right, both guns are clear. Clear. All right, the next step we do, and now we know our guns are safe to load, is to get some ammunition. If you notice, there are red boxes back here. The, the French like to paint all their artillery things red, the cannon carriage, the different boxes, the water buckets. It's red, the British one, kind of a bluish gray color, just to note which military was being used. We're French, so we have red uh, on our ammunition boxes. Inside these is where we keep our gunpowder. We keep it back here because we don't want any flame from the cannon. When you watch it go off, you'll see there's a lot of flame and smoke. We don't want any of that coming into our gunpowder. So we keep the boxes further back and they open toward the cannon. So the box lid opens toward the cannon. So it's a further safety procedure. All right, if you guys would select a round. Now our rounds are kept in aluminum foil because they tend to melt when we shoot it. In the 18th century, their rounds were wrapped in linen. The problem with using linen today is when it leaves the barrel, it travels down range on fire, and it tends to set fire to anything that it might land on, like the grass, which we don't want to do. So just for safety reasons, we're using aluminum foil. Advance the round. Now when they get the round up to the cannon, you'll see that they load it from the front. The front of a cannon barrel is called the muzzle. So these are muzzle loaders. Then they'll use a long wooden dowel called a ramrod to push it to the breech end, that's the rear end of the cannon. And once we have it seated back there, you might ask yourself, how are you going to fire it if everything is going from the front? At the rear of the cannon is a small hole called a touch hole. We're going to take a brass brick, you may or may not be able to see against the sky there. We use brass instead of steel so there's no sparking. It's going to insert that, go ahead and it. It's going to insert that to that touch hole to break open the cartridge and expose the gunpowder. Then you're going to fill that touch hole up with real finely pound uh, ground gunpowder called priming powder, which is very easily ignited when it's ground so finely. And, and that's how we're actually going to ignite it. Now, we're almost ready to shoot it. The best thing to do for the noise is to take the two hands, cup them like this, and put them in front of your ear so you kind of have two elephant ears. And actually deflects the noise much better than sticking your finger.
cigarette would, would burn in. That's actually what we're going to use to touch off that priming powder. All right? So, prepare to fire gun one. Fire, fire in the game! 